As you know, uh, this, this spring for the uh, primary election, we have, uh, of course, videos of uh, candidates. Uh, the candidates that spoke earlier were uh, uh, unopposed. Well, to, I guess uh, Congressman Marshall was uh, took the primary, and so did uh, Latour. But uh, our other officials, uh, we uh, had more videotape them, and we videotaped them. Rich was one of the candidates that we videotaped, even though he doesn't uh, have an opponent in the election. He did a good job, and I thought it'd be nice if, if he would just uh, give a, a brief talk on his job, his role, and what he's seen in our law enforcement in uh, Nemaha County. So, Rich? Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is my fifth I think, yeah, my fifth electoral season, I think is what you would, would call it. And what I've learned in five seasons is it's, it, it, I highly recommend running on a post. It, it works out really well. I like it. Um, and in all reality, it lets me focus on just my job. Uh, you know, uh, when I was first starting to do that, 38 years old, when I got elected to, uh, to, to the sheriff position, and I told my dad, I said, you know, I really don't know if I'm going to do this just yet. You know, because it, it can be kind of short-lived. I mean, you know, you put your go basically going into a popularity Karen contest every uh, every four years. And my my dad said he sat there and looked at me in the eyes. He said, "You do your job and let the rest of it it'll work out." And, and you know, and, and that's the way I looked at it the entire time that I've been here with the sheriff's office. Um, this is my thirtieth year uh, representing law enforcement in Nemaha County. Uh, it's been a wild ride. I can tell you, it's been uh, obviously uh, a lot of changes over the years um, from a being out in the middle of nowhere all night long by yourself to where we try to run at least two law enforcement officers at, a, at any one given time in the county. Um, it's never a good feeling when you haul it for help and there's no one there to help you, uh, whether you be the cop or someone else uh, that's out there. So we try to do that. Um, that, is, that has increased quite a bit. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen the the uh, quite a few changes. Some of them were voluntary. Some of them not so much voluntarily. Uh, legislative to change some issues. Now, um, you heard me talking with the uh, Senator Pyle there just a little bit ago about <laughs> the, the governor hasn't been very kind, uh, or at least not in her words and deeds to to law enforcement. Give you a little background on that. I, I didn't like I said I didn't really want to drop that on uh, the senator, but I. But I didn't know whether he had heard about it yet. Uh, the senator, in, in her wisdom, or excuse me, the uh, governor, in her wisdom, has decided that all law enforcement in the state of Kansas are racist. Now, I've never met the governor. Um, I don't know how she can say that I'm racist. But uh, you know, for a number of years now, we've had to to take. Racial, racial and biased policing classes. We've all done them. I mean, I mean, we're all biased about something somewhere in life. I mean, it, it's for whatever reason we are. We have to be aware of those biases and, and make sure they're not making making decisions for us. And, and that's basically what we try to, you know, we're taught in these classes. And just because I don't like something particularly doesn't mean that I can't uh, can't uh, take a look at it and, be, and make a good decision based on what the, the facts are. But anyway, uh, that's what they've done, and, and uh, she's, she's put a, a committee together, uh, and they're, I guess, going to come up with some new rules for cops to work by. So I'm not sure what those will be. Um, we'll see how that all turns out. But uh, I can tell you, I don't know how long we've been going through this, uh, this craziness in the country right now. But I can tell you that in the last five to six months, I've had more thank yous, thanks for what you do, we appreciate you, nothing but good things to be said about local law enforcement right here for us. Now I understand not everybody's happy with us all the time, I understand that. When you get a speed ticket, that's not a, you know, you're not happy with us, I, I appreciate that. Uh, but for the overall basic, I have never had in my 30 year career, I have never had the show of outboard support that we have now. It is great, and I appreciate it. That's because of all you. It's, I mean, you know, we, we do our jobs, we try hard. Um, you know, do we always make the right decision? No. 
I mean, there, I'm, I'm sure there's some people that would say that we don't make the right decisions at point in time. We try to focus on what needs to be focused on. Uh, if it, you know, and, and if other things, you know, we do what we can when we can. So, uh, does anybody have any, any questions for me? I don't want to stand between you and a pork job. Uh, I had a question a little bit ago. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Why is it that what? Excuse me, what? That a Texas company? Are you talking like my medical staff? Is that what you're talking about? Or a comp the, the private jails that are happening down in Kansas City? I'm talking about your jail here. Uh -huh. Somebody's in jail, and I want them to make a phone call. They're going to pay this Texas company for going to call. Okay, okay. So there's a limited number of people that provide services for jails. Okay, so the phone service for a jail is very, very particular. If we don't want you to call anybody, you don't get to call anybody. You know what I'm saying? So the phone system has to be set up that way. The, to my knowledge, there's no, there's no Kansas-based phone company that deals with that for jails. They don't just have, like you have at home, like you have a normal phone that you dial out a number and go. That's not what they have. They, they have to use phone cards. Everything that they say on that phone is recorded. Um, they're told that it's recorded right up front. And uh, so if, let's just say someone calls and tries to tamper with a witness or something from the jail, we, we have that recording and we know what's going on with it. We can provide that to the attorneys. But um, I understand what you're saying. Why, why wouldn't we support something local? The biggest reason there is because there isn't anybody local to provide that service. Just, uh, you know, my company, that we use for, it's called ACH, um, it's for healthcare. Now major events actually go through the hospital out here, but the hospital and I sat down and said, you know, we really don't like your inmates sitting in our lobby. And we really don't like taking our inmates out of the jail to go to the hospital. That's a security risk in, in, in some cases. So what we did is we worked with a company called ACH who brings doctors and nurses into our facility and does the everyday stuff. Um, you know, they, they, if they've got headaches or they've got stomach aches or cramps or dental or whatever the case may be, they'll come into jail. Now, if they have an emergency, then they still go to the hospital if we need to be able to send, we'll bring an ambulance in, we'll send an officer with the ambulance, we'll do all that, that, that normal stuff. But it was a way to try to solve a couple of problems that we were both having and, and make it work out. Um, I, don't, I don't like everything about it, but I do like the ability in order to do that. Uh, I had a question in the back of the room just a little bit ago about how many bad cops are there in the United States of America? Um, I don't know, I hope there aren't very many, but um, I don't know of any study that says how many cops get in trouble or, I mean, we try to hire good people. We try to work with people and make sure they're making good decisions and, and decisions made towards the good of, of benefit of the, of the people. But bad things can happen. You know, this whole thing, this guy that started this whole thing up in Minneapolis where he knelt on, or the, that's what they're using for catalysts anyway, that he knelt on the guy's neck, the guy dies. By the way, he was full of fentanyl. You don't hear that on, uh, on TV but he was full of fentanyl, and he dies. And the guy that knelt on his deck, that, that, by the way, is a maneuver that's taught to police. What it's designed to do is actually hold their head still while we're putting cuffs on them so they don't bite you. You're not supposed to be on them for five to seven minutes. You're not supposed to do that. And in and and, and, and any training, we tell them that. But do you know where that guy's at? He's in jail. And that's where he should be at this state of the game. So he will have his day in court. If, they, if we do something wrong, we're not anybody special. If we do something wrong, we need to be held accountable just like anybody else. And that's what that's the, the part that everybody seems to be missing. And if, if, if we break the law, God forbid, or do something in a manner that's not, not kosher with the way the rest of the world works, then we need to be held accountable. And, and that's, that's what we do. That's, that's the way the world should work. Um, that's what's happening there. I'm not sure why all of a sudden this blew up. I think maybe it was there might have been something else behind that. Maybe just a little bit. So, 
Any other questions? Yes, sir. How are you doing on funding for the sheriff's department? Are you your budget still? I got all the money I ever wanted. <laughs> 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 um, well, I mean, you know, the we had a, a what I would call a major jump when we went from the old jail to the new jail. Um, I told them when we did it that I would try to use the staff that I had in the old jail, which was like uh, 2,200 square feet, to take care of the 15,000 square feet that we moved into. And I also was very not very uh, open to them up front because I don't think I can do it. So we have added a little bit there. So there's there in the last, since 2014, there has been a little bit of bump in the deal. I usually give back somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty to a hundred thousand dollars to the commissioners each year. That's what I do. Now we have a great system, in my opinion, worked out. Um, I ask for my budget. Um, I, I I usually takes me about a week to really put the pencil to it. I mean, I get a kick out of my number. By the way, if you ever want mine, I'm senator. If you would like mine, I'll be glad to give them to you. Um, we have a kick out every month of exactly where I spend every dollar. And I use those as, you go, as I go through, we usually in July, they want, they want the, the budgets in July or August for the next year, but they, oftentimes I don't know what they're gonna give for raises, so that's very difficult to do. So, because that's the biggest portion of my budget is the people that work for me. So uh, anyway, so I give them a budget and they say, okay, you know, or no, you, need, you don't get that much, or, you know, I've had them cut a few thousand out of it before, and I've had them add a few thousand before. And then at the end of the year, you know, uh, there's, it, it seems like in some agencies, especially at the state and federal level, if you don't spend every single dollar that you had this year in a budget, they're going to cut next year's budget. So they go out at the end and they go, oh man, we need that, we need that, we need that, you know, no. At, at the end of the year, I do everything until December 31st, just like anything else, and whatever's left goes right back to them. And uh, like I said, it usually averages 30 to 100,000. Uh, never been over budget. Uh, don't want to be, because then I got to file an amended budget, and you guys get to make fun of me because I went over budget, and I don't want to do that. So th that's where I fall with that. Yeah. I have a very serious question for you. Okay. No, I won't do it. They can fire me, but I won't do it. Well, as far as I know, the only people that can fire me is you guys. Now I can maybe get into trouble. I can be held up in contempt of court. Um, I, I mean, I don't see, there are probably some places, I, a lot of this, this gets into, you guys know what a red flag warning is? Some states have red flag warnings where they want us to go out and take guns from quote unquote mentally unstable people. Um, Kansas doesn't have that right now, by the way, and, and hopefully we won't, by the way. But so let's just say, just for you and I are married, we're, we're not getting along, and, and I've made you mad, and you're deciding you're leaving, and you go to the cops and say, That guy's crazy, he's got guns all over his house. I want to file a report on that. So all of a sudden, you file that report, now they're going to send the sheriff out in some states to take your guns. And that's not going to happen. No, I mean, it's just, there, there's people fighting it all over the place. Now, it does happen in some cases where they're, they've had a chance to represent themselves. Now, if you, like, uh, I don't know what I want to say. Uh, there have been some courts in places that have said, Sheriff, he's had an opportunity to come in and give his side. She's given her side, and I believe he is mentally unstable. And I want you to go get his guns. Um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't do that, depending on what the scenario was, but the only way, in my opinion, the only way they could ever go after people's guns in the country is for us at the local level to do it, and I don't think you can, I mean, I know a lot of sheriffs, and I don't think I, very, very, very few would ever do that. Diamond? All right. Before, before you, wait a minute, Rich, before you leave, um, Ann Mosier has a, uh, Hey, Flat, or has something for you here? I'll let her explain it to you. Hi, Rich. 
This is from the Kansas Federation of Republican Women. We had a meeting Saturday, yesterday, and they would like to present you with this poster that says 2020 Kansas Federation of Republican Women backs the blue. Thank you for your service. And we all signed it, and it's from five districts in the state of Kansas. Thank you very and much. And so we are for the law enforcement, 100%. You bet. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And like I said, you know, to not Ray, I'll just jump right out here real quick. Thank you guys for allowing us to do our jobs and, and being supportive of us around here because you know we're damn good and well that places in the country right now are not that way. I can't imagine for a second being a young cop in Minneapolis, Minnesota and going to work every day and knowing that everybody you dealt with is going to freaking hate you. I can't imagine that for a second. So anyway, have a good night. God bless.